When I saw my sister, Delia, beating my dog with a stick, I felt heat heave like a gazed, angry beast in my chest thought she had a weak heart and she must not be surprised. So I held myself, my throat swelled, and I felt hate air and plunge in its gauge of ribs. I was 13 when my father first took me hunting. All through the summer of that year, I had tramped alone and unarmed the fields and forests around our farm. Then one afternoon in late July my father told me I could use his shotgun. That's good. Can't we throw a stone? No, you have to wait. Suddenly, a small dog yelping shrilly came tearing across the brooding plain of grass and small trees. One of the birds whistled and the covey dispersed like seeds thrown in the wind. May I keep him, father? Well, I'm not sure. That dog belongs to somebody. May I keep him until his owner comes for him? He'd make a good pointer. But, I would not like my son to be accused of dog stealing. Oh, no. I shall return him when the owner comes to claim him. All right, I hope that dog makes a hunter out of you. For you and I became fast friends. Every afternoon after school we went to the field to chase quails or to the bank of the river which was fenced by tall, blade sharp reeds to flesh snipes. Father was away most of the time but when he was home he hunted with us. Eddie. Come here. I don't want to see that dog again in the house. That dog destroyed my slippers again. I'll tell Berto to kill that dog if I see it around again. My sister was the meanest creature I knew. She was eight when I was born, the day my mother died. Although we continued to live in the same house, she had gone, it seemed, to another country from where she looked at me with increasing annoyance and contempt. One of my first solid memories was of standing before a grass hut. A doll was cradled in the box. It was my sister's playhouse and I remember she told me to keep out of it. The doll looked incredibly heavy. I picked it up. It was slight but it had hard, unflexing limbs. I tried to bend one of the legs and it snapped. I stared with horror at the hollow tube that was the leg of the doll. Then I saw my sister coming. She pushed me hard and it crashed against the wall. I heard my sister screaming. Then suddenly my sister moaned, she stiffened, the sapling fell from her hand and quietly, as though a sling were lowering her, she sank to the ground. Her eyes were wild as scudding on the edges of her lips. I ran to the house yelling for father. She came back from the hospital quiet and mean. Nothing I did ever please her. She destroyed woefully anything I liked. At first, I took it as a process of adaptation, a step of adjustment. I snatched and crushed every seed of anger she planted in me, but later on I realized that it had become a habit with her. I did not say anything when she told Berto to kill my monkey because it snickered at her one morning, while she was brushing her teeth. I did not say anything when she told father that she did not like my pigeon house because it stank and I had to give away my pigeons and Berto had to chop the house into kindling wood. I learned how to hold myself because I knew we had to put up with her whims to keep her calm and quiet. But when she dumped my butterflies into a waste can and burned them in the backyard, I realized that she was spiting me. My butterflies never snickered at her and they did not smell. She knew too that my butterfly collection had grown with me. But when I arrived home, one afternoon, from school, I found my butterflies in a can, burned in their cotton beds like decal. I wept and father had to call my sister for an explanation. Delia, come here. Explain to your brother, what happened. They were attracting ants. I ran after Baruch Dot then I saw that one of his eyes was bleeding. I sat on the ground and looked closer. The eye had been pierced. The stick of my sister had stabbed the eye of my dog. I was stunned. On my way back to the house, I saw Berto in the shade of a tree, splitting wood. Hey, Eddie. I've got something for you. You know, that son of a devil nearly frightened me to death. I didn't expect to find any centipede here, 
It nearly bit me. Who wouldn't get shocked? I stuck this liver into the carapace of the centipede. Then I made sure it was dead by brushing its antennae. The centipede did not move. I wrapped it in a handkerchief. My sister was enthroned in a large chair in the porch of the house. She was not aware of my presence. I unwrapped the centipede. I threw it on her lap. My sister shrieked and a strip of white sheet flew off like an unhanded hawk. She shot up from her chair, turned around and she saw me but she collapsed again to her chair clutching her breast, doubled up with pain the centipede had fallen to the floor. But, it's dead. It's dead. Look. Look. It's dead. Then, I came back to my senses when I saw the result of my action. My sister fell down and cried with pain. I regretted it and felt guilty but the damage had been done already.